only TV can make this world seem right. Only TV can make the darkness bright. And speaking of bright things, Tom McNabb is here, everybody. The most bright, wonderful part of the internet. LGB Tom, as you know him. The, the TV guru himself from across the ocean. Tom, thank you so much for joining. Thank you for having me. I, I've, I've been anticipating what the song opening would be, and I'm ashamed to say I don't know the original. It is an old school deep cut. It is Only You by the Platters from 1955. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> um, and it was also in Hot Shots, which is a movie, which I usually don't talk about. Um, and if the audio is a little wonky, guys, it's because it took us an hour to get here and we're, this is the best we're going to do. <laughs> They'll come for the, the star power alone. Yes. I mean, everybody knows LGB Tom. <laughs> like, you've heard about him on Cabernet and A, you've heard about him. I think even the shade of it all has even brought you up. No. So, really? I think they know you. They definitely know who you are. Wow. Because you talk to them so well my, my biggest honor- break in anyway we'll get into it when it's because it's part of one of my favorite shows and with favorite shows come favorite podcasts oh indeed so we have been wanting to do this for a while but we waited until the upfront so we could get the most important show information <laughs> which is pretty little liars colon the perfectionists amazing <laughs> And also infuriating. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about it. So we know each other through PLL fandom. Yeah. Um, I, so my experience with the show is I binge watched season one and two in order to start when season three started. Mm-hmm. I feel like it was similar for you. I um I actually watched first season. I watched a couple of episodes. I have only binged a few. Um, I found it through a podcast, the TV Talk podcast, which is now defunct, but I still s- follow them on social like we're friends. They think I'm crazy. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I I was obsessed with PLL as soon as I started watching. I mean, everyone start watching. A lot of my friends were like, stop telling me to watch this show. <laughs> I don't well, care about this show. That was the interesting show. thing because I didn't know anybody who watched it, so that's why I what led me to podcasts and it it was kind of a um six degrees of kevin bacon sort of way because I, <laughs> the first ever podcast i'd never listened to a podcast until throwing shade with um Brian oh yeah Aaron. and through that i found go Bearside hosted by april richardson and then mm-hmm. april richardson was a guest on pretty little podcasters and so that yeah led me to that and from pretty little podcasters i found coming in it that is a great like little trail there of all good people great people um we are both friends with the pretty little podcasters as well <laughs> and you and ben have a new podcast yeah uh in june hopefully to debut the spin-off of pretty little podcasters which is pretty little myers <laughs> which <laughs> delves into the Halloween franchise starring the villain, Michael Myers, not to be confused with the actor, Mike Myers. <laughs> when I told my friend the name of it, he was like, Selena Myers, is it a V thing? And I was like, no, but that would also work wonderfully. <laughs> Who's Selena Myers? From the show Veep. Oh. Uh. Haven't it's watched. an HBO show. It's um, Julia Louis Dreyfus. She I wins know an of it, yeah. all the time for it, um, except for this year, which was kind of shitty because she has breast cancer this year, and they didn't even nominate her. So screw you. Um, speaking of the uh, random sideways, I think we're going all over the place, and I'm I'm fine with it. Um, I am hopefully going to be a member of the TV Academy. I put in my money and my dues and put through my resume so hopefully fingers crossed that I get in this year I've got tried a couple of times and they've kicked me back for stupid reasons here and there so but uh does this mean if I get in I your voice counts 
Yes, it means I can vote for who gets Emmys. So uh-huh. get ready, the perfectionist. Get ready, no. Keegan Allen. <laughs> yes, exactly. Keegan Allen. Oh, wouldn't it be amazing if he would show up on that show? I mean, I'm sure all the guys can show up. Well, this is what I want to get into because I feel like the first thing with it premiering in 2019, we're supposed to say 2019, aren't we? I'm still not used to that. You can say whatever you want. Um. <laughs> They're gonna. F- I feel like they're gonna film all ten episodes, uh, and get them banked, um, because mm-hmm. I feel like they're gonna do what they did with Famous in Love, uh, which was they released the entire first ten episodes, um, online. Oh, that's right. They did. So I don't know if that's what they're gonna do. I think they've got a lot of money behind it. I think they've got a lot of hope for it. I think it's really interesting social media wise that they're keeping the same handles. I think that's great because they've already got the the fans, but I think it's a really different show. It, it well, it is. It's completely different, and it. I mean, the trailer alone. Uh, ben hadn't hadn't watched the trailer, which like amazed me, but also I kind of respected that because I feel like I've peaked too early. <laughs> and I, I'm just not going to get the answers now because it's told from Alison's point of view, which is mm-hmm. so interesting because th- that's what we're to believe is such a small part of the show because it's based on an entirely different story and mm-hmm. Alison and Mona have been su- like supplanted into it. So th- there's so many questions like, is... Alison following Mona, or is Mona following Alison? How much of the first series of Pretty Little Lives will be referenced? I and obviously, I think the hugest thing, especially mm-hmm. in the fandom universe, is that this is going to upset the balance of. You're doing. I like that you're doing, he's doing hand-waving motions. And I'm like, the hand. Emerson. No. <laughs> the, the balance of what? Emerson. Oh, Emerson, yeah. yes. Everyone's very worried about that. And they're, they've been like, oh, don't worry about it. But I'm like, what does that mean? Well, I think my, there's an issue here. My theory is Allison's going to pretend that they're broken up. Um... And that's why she came to Beacon Heights, as it were, um, mm-hmm. to follow Mona. And mm-hmm. she wants to like try and get Mona back on the team because I feel like Mona may be the only person who knows who the father is of Emily's and Allison's babies. Ooh, I would love that carryover. That would be really interesting. Um, Shay Mitchell, of course, busy filming you, the li- new Lifetime show. Have you seen that preview? No. Oh, <laughs> get to it. It is phenomenal. I read the whole book series. It's only two books, but I acted like it was a big deal. It's 800 pages. That's a lot of not watching television for me. So I, uh, it's such a good book. The preview looks amazing. It's Penn Bagley um john stamos with a beard and shay mitchell with her doe eyes um and she's also playing spoiler alert a lesbian again so um i think think it's gonna be a really good show real life she's kind of she she hasn't like ruled out the fact that she's not straight but yeah, she's never I think defined she's anything. Possibly bi, but probably straight and just very um, ambiguous for her career, which you do you, girl. I mean, if I was getting that kind of money to look that hot, I would do the same thing. But what's interesting is her and, well, her specifically, she's going to be doing another Marley McKing show. Yes. So she'll yeah. always be in that universe ready to come on board should it ever need to happen. But I think. What was she doing again for Marlene? 
there was something, yeah, there was something recently mm. announced. There were so many TV announcements recently. It was like my brain was going to explode. <laughs> and then I have to keep my work one straight, too. I was just like, there's a lot of television news, and I love it. It's just sad because now it's summer and there's not that much new television. Yeah, well, luckily I watch Big Brother, so. Oh, uh, <laughs> see, I never got it. I even tried the celebrity one that we had here. I watched, like, one or two episodes, and I was just kind of like, mm, I don't know. I'm just not into it as un unscripted as much as I used to be, <laughs> which, I mean, I still love The Housewives, which yeah. I'm very ashamed of. But So is there any other TV news you wanted to bring up? Um, or anything else about Perfectionist that we need to touch on that we haven't yet? No, because at this point it's just... Um, spinning theories, which is, is just infuriating, because I, I think I've spent the past two nights in bed going, "Well, was Mona really in France? Are they? Are they? <laughs> are Alex and Mary still in in this dollhouse? Are they just going to cut to it and be, be skeletons?" <laughs> <laughs> no, she went to the royal wedding. Exactly, she got out and went that's, to the royal wedding. <laughs> that's the theory. Yes, but also um, Tryon. Um, directed an episode of Famous in Love. So yeah. I'm sure she will be allowed to direct an episode of The Perfectionist. And also, one, one of the, I just love the way it looks. It's shot in Portland. Um, mm -hmm. And they're looking to shoot the entire series there, and I really hope they can. Because I think Bates Motel filmed in um, Washington and Hmm. It looks, it just has this yeah. whole complete like, look that you can't find. I mean, with Pretty Little Lies, it existed in its own universe, but it was like, oh, this is the WB back lot. <laughs> yeah, no, it was very much LA. You could tell it was, um, Rosewood was the Gilmore Girls yeah. setting. So it, there was a lot of, oh, that same triangle, just all the time used. <laughs> And um, um, it was in Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Oh, <laughs> that's a good one, too. Yeah. Similar, spo so similar. <laughs> <laughs> um, so do you want to get to your top five? Yeah, well, in, I feel like because we talked about Pretty Little Lies so much, I, I kept it to a top four. Okay. And it's, it's in no particular order of favoritism. They're just, okay. th these are the four that I felt I could stretch the most conversation out of, organically at least. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, w I will just put out into the universe, if, I know it's terrible when these things happen, but should it happen, please can the pilot episode of The Perfectionist find it way to my eyes. I would like to see it very much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, however we can see it, let's try and see it. I really want that to happen. Because oh, my theory is that um, Netflix will pick it up for international distribution. Oh, probably. And they would probably release it all to that, too. Mm -hmm. They do that a lot. Um, and you guys are able to see Drag Race Day of as well yeah. now. That's pretty exciting. Yeah, that's made a huge change. Um, but They probably did that because there was so much piracy internationally with it that they were like, let's just find a way to make it happen. Yeah, I mean, I always used a VPN. Um, mm -hmm. I think I we still have to for All Stars because up until this most recent one, mm -hmm. it, um, it hadn't got... International uh, distribution? Yeah. It, they, oh. don't put, they don't put All Stars on Netflix. They consider well, this last season of All Stars was garbage. <laughs> and you can hear me talking about it on The Shade of It All. Because yeah. I would have a lot of thoughts and feels. <laughs> but this season 10 has been great. Yeah, I'm loving season 10 of Drag Race. It's just so much fun. I keep re-watching every episode. I'm really into it. I have Asia to win. I know it's a long shot, but I, I feel good about her. Yeah, I definitely see top three or top four, however they're doing it this year. Yeah. Um, it, but you never know because, like, last season with the whole Valentina thing, it just came out of left field. 
Oh, I know. Take that thing off your face. <laughs> That remix music. Have you heard the song? It's yes. so good. It's like I I live and die for it. Um. All right. We're we're all over the place. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So number five was a uh, Pretty Little Liars, and I think we gave that enough justice. So, well, I have to. There's there's the controversial ending of PLL. Yeah. How do you? So you still feel good about it because you're willing to watch The Perfectionist, I assume. Yeah. Um. It's. I wasn't offended by the accent as much as everybody <laughs> else seemed to be and I had correctly guessed back in maybe February um, that Alex Drake existed and and this mm -hmm. like we only got a name because um, the WB screwed up and released the bonus features for the DVD and one of the uh... one of the bonus features was me Alex <laughs> that's right that's right I do remember that we were all wondering what the hell that meant yeah so yeah but I felt like that I'm glad what because what I'm glad about is it gives me what I feel are the two characters that we can get the most out of especially Mona like yeah I just always think back to the Christmas episode and the way that Sasha and Janelle played off of each other and that was they're great together yeah that's one of the episodes that I continually go back and watch like especially mm -hmm. at Christmas yes it's it's so, such a great holiday thing <laughs> <laughs> the the way it kind of it's like I I, sh I shared uh, I think this was Chelsea's sentiments that it devolved into it being about relationships and th that never was what I watched it for. Yeah, we wanted the mystery. Yeah. We wanted to solve a mystery and they never gave us that fully. And and especially with the whole Me Too movement, I just feel like Ezra has become so problematic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very much so. And they always try and justify it. They're like, no, well, like, he was a young teacher. It's okay in Pennsylvania. Like, it wasn't, like, she was as much of, into it as he was. I'm just like, okay. Let's um, just all agree. Like, I wish that they were almost like, you know what? It was probably not the best choice. But I, we discussed about this in Halloween. We, you know, we just said these are the things that were of their time. And, mm -hmm. um, sometimes you just can't transplant them into the modern day because attitudes change uh, uh, but some some things are timeless like um one, one of my shows on my list <laughs> yes <laughs> so it, that leads nicely into i think nobody will be surprised to hear that one of my favorite shows is murder she wrote murder she wrote is fantastic <laughs> obsessed with it I don't watch the reruns as much as I used to but I still I think it's so fun yeah Jessica Fletcher, fabulous I, I don't it just feels like home to me it's like that's a, an example that I mean okay there are certain episodes that in regards to maybe uh, voodoo and <laughs> Native Americans, which we're actually supposed to call First Nations now. But first, oh, yeah. I, I did not know that. I just recently read, yeah, they, they want to be referred to as, I don't know if it's First Nation or First Nationers. Okay. Um, but they Whatever were, they want. We took all their land yeah. for beads. Well, this like, is the thing, cause I, I found it because <laughs> I was researching where all these extra letters come from from in the LGBTQIA such and such. Yes. And there is a new one, which is the number two. And oh, it we're putting numerals in now? Yeah, it represents, okay. um, it stands for two spirits, and Native Americans don't believe in gay and lesbian and, and trans and things. They, they believe that a person has within them either the spirit of a male or a spirit of a female, but a person can have 
for at the same time, and certain degrees of those <laughs> spirits are more prevalent. If it's like gay, then it's more of the female that's pre prevalent, or if it's you know trans, then it's like completely the female that's prevalent. Huh. That I, was really interesting. I only just read this on, and it was on just a WordPress blog, so I may have butchered it, but it, it... <laughs> seems like a reputable site. I'm all for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I it always seems like um, first reaction is to be like dismissive. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to do that. I wanted to research where this two had popped up from, and now I, I, so I, I will be more welcoming of new attitudes and ideas. I like that. So you were talking about the show Murder, She Wrote. Mm -hmm. um, so that feels like home. And yeah. I don't know how young I was when I first watched it, but um, it was always on in the afternoon. And yes, it. I would watch it because it would follow immediately after one of my other favorite shows, which I'll talk about next. Ooh, um, look at that! A little <laughs> teaser here. Um, so it was on BBC. Mm -hmm. Um, at about quarter past two, and then sometimes they would replace it with either Diagnosis Murder okay, or Father Dowling Mysteries. Ah, and Father Dowling spin-off yeah. of Murder, She Wrote. Well, well, the character no, the character wasn't a, a spin-off. The actor he left yes. to do Father Dowling Mysteries. That's true. I, um, I have to ask, as a British person watching Murder, She Wrote <laughs> Did it scare you to come to America? I feel like if I were you, I'd be like, wow, <laughs> America is just full of murderers and we're the only people in these in America, like they just need British people to help solve this. <laughs> like, Well, no, because I, I always felt like Jessica was Irish. So even like she would come. And... Isn't she British? Um, In the show, I think she is Irish. Really? Oh no, she has. Because she has that like cousin, cousin in, London in London who comes, and spoiler alert, it's her. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's an Alex Drake situation. Yeah, it's her like wearing a hat, and with a thicker accent. <laughs> like it's great. But yeah, I mean, you could think of her as Irish. I don't remember her drinking. No, I'm just kidding. That was horrible, guys. Sorry, Ireland. <laughs> Well, because the last TV movie was set in Ireland. Um, uh, that was two, so that, 2004. Wow. Yeah. Um, and sh she would love to do another one. And if she does another one, that's going to be set in Ireland. Oh, good for her. I hope we do get another murder she wrote before, well, I, I you know, she bows out. CBS don't ruin it like they're doing to Magnum P.I. and... Um, What's his face? Um, Ma um, have they rebooted Magnum PI yet? I they're think, going to. Yeah. They're not like they're the only thing that the guy's gonna have a mustache. I think MacGyver it's gonna be similar. And oh yeah, MacGyver got, I think MacGyver got canceled, but they are also redoing Murphy Brown, which I cannot wait for. But that's the the original cast. Yes, so it's not really a reboot. Yeah. It's just a restart. Which, that's actually something we could talk about. If you have any thoughts about Charmed, they released a trailer for that. So, I never was really into Charmed, but I will say that a lot of my friends are, and a lot of my friends have reached out to me <laughs> and been very upset. <laughs> like, I've, um, I had one friend who was upset that it was all Latina, which I didn't know they were all Latina, but he said they all look that way. Well, it's from the creator of Jane the Virgin. Which I'm fine with. And also, like, the reboot for One Day at a Time. I've only watched a couple of episodes, but I really love that. And I'm also like, let's bring more diversity to exactly, television. Yeah. I am absolutely cool with that. But I do Tommy Jurassic, Tico71, other 
big Twitter star, he uh, was just telling me that he was annoyed because it seems like the sister relationship is very different. Because it was like, they didn't really know they had the third sister, and they're kind of speeding that up. And it's just, it's an interesting, like, and then I had another friend write me and be like, this just doesn't feel the same. It feels like it's just not the same source story, and they should make it like Charm 2.0, which is something that Tommy also agreed with. So I, I just, I think all my friends have basically said they wish that it wasn't as much a reboot as like, Almost like Pretty Little Liars, colon, The Perfectionist. Yeah. Like, Charmed, colon, The New Class or something. <laughs> well, it's, to me, it's like, well, it's like you said, um, it feels like a completely different show, but they just have references to The Book of Shadows. And mm-hmm. the fact that they are three, three is the Charmed ones. Like... The British character, or the, the whoever's putting on the accent, that, <laughs> that just feels completely out of left field. That doesn't feel like Charmed at all. That feels like... Did you ever watch The Secret Circle? Oh, I watched a couple of episodes. I remember Secret Circle, yeah. I loved The Secret Circle, and it feels a lot like that. Yeah. Secret Circle almost felt a little bit more like The Craft, I feel like. Yeah. Do you remember that movie? Oh, yeah. You remember that movie. So, Murder, She Wrote, Comfort Food, very, like, you watched it all the time. Do you still watch it as much? Yeah, so it moved from BBC to ITV, ITV being okay. the people who do Downton Abbey. Um, mm-hmm. And it's never been off of reruns. Wow. Um, the only preempted sometimes like it just got preempted for the royal wedding which fair enough i mean <laughs> we'll allow it um but it's it's good that i would no matter what hap- what's happening in the world i always feel like i can turn to that yeah you can always go back to cabot cove find yeah. a dead body have jessica solve it no prob that's the thing it's wrapped up in 45 minutes yeah, and also, I just love when you spot old actors, oh, like, there's yeah. so many people that, like, have, that, like, went on to become very big, that were just kind of, like, small roles, and you see them in those, like, giant 80s glasses, <laughs> and you're like, wait a minute, that's Ted Danson, like, or some, whoever, yeah. you're like, crazy. Well, there was George Clooney, Courtney yeah. Cox, um... I'm sure there's just been everybody. Every, everybody. So many people came through Cabot Cove and just found bodies. <laughs> so, so that's nostalgia factor for me. I get I totally get that. So what's your next episode or next show rather? So <laughs> what may have led me to murder she wrote was the Australian soap Neighbours. Oh, I've totally heard of Neighbours yeah. and I've never really seen an episode, but I know that um, wasn't Kylie Minogue? Yeah. Like, I feel like a lot of, like, everyone that you know from Australia was at one point on Neighbours. Yeah, Kylie Minogue, Guy Pearce. Um... Oh my god, where's Guy Pearce? What <laughs> happened to him? He was in my best friend's wedding and he's done? Like, what happened? And obviously the big one, which is Margot Robbie. Yes. Man, Neighbours has been on forever. Yeah. Um... Is it still on? Yeah. I don't know how uh, Americans can watch it. I I feel like it tried to do Hulu for a while, but I don't know if they still do. I mean, how do you fit a thousand seasons on? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's similar to what we have with, like, Days of Our Lives mm-hmm. and All My Children. It's just, like, such a soap. Um, do you have, like, a favorite storyline or moment from Neighbors? Um, well, like, when it was on BBC, yeah, it was on BBC and then they moved networks to Channel 5 in the UK. Mm -hmm. So when it was on BBC, it was Neighbours and then Murder, She Wrote. And around that time, 10 years ago, was probably my favourite character, which was Isabel Hoyland. And she she was um, kind of a money grabber and (laughs) 
she always had the dramatic storylines. She, mm-hmm. she like broke up the like pinnacle couple of Ramsey Street and, and caused Love. them to get a divorce. She got pregnant with his child and went to London and never told him. Oh man, comes back with the baby. <laughs> like here you no, go. No, no, she didn't even do that. Like they, um, the Carl and Susan, they go to London to get married for a second time, I think, or a third time. As you do. You, know. <laughs> you um, find the one, then you let them go, and then you find them all over again. <laughs> because they need to. They need to break them up so that um, new stepchildren can come into it. Because this is the problem oh. with soaps, is that when it's based on a street, you need to recycle that family. So you can't oh, yeah. have them in the show for too long. Because you just end up getting to a point where, which we have experienced many times, where random children will just move in with the Kennedys and <laughs> and be like, you know, what? Uh, sometimes you just need to take in some extra kids, get some <laughs> government money for um, whatevs. You know, it's neighbors. You're neighborly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the doors are never locked. Everyone always walks in without knocking. Many an awkward situation has been come upon that's been played for daytime hilarity without referencing <laughs> sex too much. But they've been really good recently in introducing um, gay characters. There's two, oh, that's good. two gay characters and a bi character um, that they're just teasing that the bi character is going to leave at the moment. Um, oh, but they're also maybe go to London, have a baby, come back. Yeah, <laughs> you know? Well, she she's bipolar too, so they've been really good at doing. Oh, she's the... bye bye. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the... although she had the Pretty Little Lies storyline where she um got together with her nurse. Oh, <laughs> of course. Why not? You know, abuse of power there. Yeah. <laughs> so um, they teasing that there'll be Australia's first ever televised of soap operas first ever gay wedding the oh, that's characters exciting. have just proposed to each other and Australia just got gay yeah. married yeah that's exciting that's I'm glad that they're working that in there uh, and I have I've, I sort of like lingered too much on Izzy the the reason back then obviously she was my favorite character because all the drama was like magnetized towards her and yeah. the big story was they did a plane crash mm-hmm. and, and they killed well they killed an entire family off which was just three people whoa <laughs> uh, brutal <laughs> um but yes yeah, so she was in the plane crash um and that was like the last like the the one that stands out for me they collapsed a hotel and then they had a hot air balloon crash and i think oh, the school caught on fire every year something <laughs> happened <laughs> man you know it's just you know another day in australia with the neighbors <laughs> yeah the, but it's always funny you they they teased that um carl kennedy um former lover of Izzy, now married to Susan again. They teased that he was going to die um, because he had a DVT, so a blood clot was like travelling around in his body, and it's going to okay. sh- kill him at any time. Um, so naturally, it struck the moment he decided to go off wandering in the bush alone. Uh, oh, man. But- See? Why you don't go to the bush alone? <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was a Tuesday, so I was like, "Well, they're not going to kill him off on a Tuesday. They only kill characters off when it's an hour special." Ah, see, they, the show's only a half hour long. It's yeah. I mean, with adverts, if you take adverts out, it's twenty minutes. But that's so much to get done. But I mean, I guess that's why they're there every day. Yeah, five days a week, um, mm-hmm. and they've only just commissioned it for entire year round usually they took a three or four week break over Mm -hmm. Christmas but now they're actually going to keep 
on and do Christmas episodes for the first time. Usually. Oh my goodness. Well, I mean, <laughs> Christmas to everybody. That's exciting. Usually they would jump and we would have Christmas Day in November just so they oh. could have a plot line that revolved around Christmas. Come on. Now we, we finally get Christmas on Christmas. That's what Christ wanted. <laughs> <laughs> So that was Neighbors. I think we're on number four now. Um, Pretty Little Lies, Murder, She Wrote, Neighbors, and number four. Um, Speaking of diversity, Mm -hmm. um, I had to include the Disney Channel show Andy Mack in in my list. Andy Mack? Yeah. I've never even... What is Andy Mack? I can't believe I don't know. You stumped me. Good. Uh, well, because <laughs> this is the one that I've like written facts for, because I, I knew this, because it only premiered April last year. Oh, okay. So it's from the creator of Lizzie McGuire. It's about Lizzie McGuire? No, from the creator of. Oh, okay. So it's huh. centered on a Chinese-American family. Um, Andy Mack um, finds out that her sister is actually her mother. Oh, that's juicy. Yeah. Um, so the f- that's like the first, well, that's the whole premise, but the first two episodes they introduced the fact that she just finds this out, so she starts to get to know her sister as her mother and it's kind of like it what it feels to me is it's gilmore girls for this generation oh that makes sense because it's like a young mom and like but how did she find out that um her sister was her mom um i think i feel like it involved a box of secrets (laughs) as of course you hide a photo in a box and because um Yeah, so it's like, so as it it needed, to, the secret needed to come out for the show to happen. So I mean, absolutely, you got to find that box and find your mom, and then start a whole Disney series. Yeah, and what <laughs> led me to watch it was this was highly publicized as the first ever Disney Channel show, which has a main character identify as gay. That's right. Okay, now I'm looking at it and I remember this. Yes. And it's also, like, a very diverse cast. Yeah, that's one of the other great things. Um, so it's um, Chinese-American lead, um, African-American friend, and Jewish gay friend. <laughs> so That's so awesome! What a fun crew! It, what, it, it just... It restores my faith in humanity that this is... Because I, I look to kids' TV these days and I'm like, where are the Clarissa Explains It All for, for yeah. kids today? <laughs> no, this is so good. The interesting thing is I'm looking at the IMDb trivia and it's produced in Salt Lake City. Yes. Which is a Mormon town. <laughs> so this is like doubly groundbreaking that they're like doing something in a place that's so conservative well the only reason i recognize it as utah is because of high school musical 2 oh i feel like you were gonna say because there's no people of color (laughs) but apparently this show brought a couple of them in there i'll never forget my friends uh indian and she went to uh utah because her company was based there and she called me from the hotel bar which only serves like four percent alcohol drinks and she was like um i'm kind of scared i'm the only brown person like she's like i don't even think anybody tans like this is like super crazy (laughs) but i hear it's getting better in terms of diversity out there and that's great that they're getting tv production stuff yeah it looks really good, and they, but weirdly, they don't seem to have any structure of seasons, because... It, yeah, Disney's kind of all over the place with that. It was 
full on snowstorm one episode, and then the next episode, it was the, the summer. It was clearly summer, but I, so I don't know how the seasons are in Salt Lake City anyway. So I just, I mean, just go with it. It's like everywhere where there's like global warming. So <laughs> I mean, yesterday it was like the heat almost came on in my apartment. It was so cold here. It was like 52 and today it's almost 80. So it's just malaria weather. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm relieved that Andy Mack has officially been picked up because we had quite an apocalypse of shows getting canceled. Yeah, there were definitely, I mean, a lot of shows got canceled in general. Only network over here that has a perfect success rate and is something that's very rare is actually TBS. TBS have, hasn't uh, canceled the show since they rebranded, I think, a year and a half ago. And so they have, like, Search Party, Angie Tribeca. Anyway, so Andy Mack changing lives. Yeah, it's so- having nephews that are, like, nine and six, it's good to know that they have wide representation even though they don't necessarily watch it um it's the same thing with neighbors i introduced neighbors to my nephew and and he like knows the characters now he's always like is that character gay and it's just like yeah (laughs) and yeah that's something didn't i didn't have growing up and that leads leads me into kind of my last favorite show number five (laughs) i'm so excited it i've i narrowed it down to what i like about you but it's under the banner of the entire television career of amanda Bynes because she played such a pivotal role in my maturity adolescence like i don't know if many people know this but i had the number one first ever highest rated British website for Amanda Bynes. Oh my god! (laughs) Wow! So my biggest ever audience was, I got 10,000 visitors in one day. Yeah. For what? The the trailer for a a film called Love Wrecked premiered, Mm -hmm. and then it was taken offline. So I had caught it before it got taken offline. And so um, I feel like I was the only one that was sharing the video of it. And then I got my first ever cease and desist, which which was exciting. (laughs) (laughs) That is very exciting. (laughs) So did you like the Amanda Bynes show? Yeah, that that was was the first time I saw her. It was about um, 2000, 2001. Mm-hmm. And so, did you not watch all that? Because wasn't she in all that and then got the Amanda Bynes show? Yeah, um, in the UK, they didn't show all that. I think this is another thing, like, it was too diverse. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny so and ridiculous, but yeah. After the Amanda show, they showed season six of all that. So, oh, wow. Um, so that had... Cause that had um, it had Amanda Bynes and Nick Cannon, and they mm-hmm. they had um, the Amanda Bynes show and the Nick Cannon show, so it was kind of familiar to people. Um, I think Keenan Thompson started on there too, and then yeah, Good spun off from there. Um, Danny Tamborelli from Pete and Pete. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's weird. Like we had Keenan and Kel, we had Pete and Pete. But they just never decided to show all that until Amanda Bynes was launched. And Ah. so for me, it it came in tandem. And Pete and Pete was before all that. It was a while before that. Because I I loved that show. And that show I don't think would have ever gotten greenlit today. It's so bizarre. (laughs) So fantastic. The old Nickelodeon, like you said, even the Clarissa, it just, it really throughout the playbook of like what was expected of children's television i'm just re-watching are you afraid of the dark 
they oh yeah but every episode is for free on youtube oh that's exciting so god bless canada <laughs> <laughs> i um found it too scary to watch oh. i can't hear anything <laughs> So, I, I mean, I know it's adorable because everyone's like, it wasn't scary, but, like, oh, even to this day... I was like, afraid of the dark the weather. It yeah, had its moments. I, it still, like, triggers the eight-year-old me that's scared. Like, I'm just like, oh, no, no. Even that, like, just the intro, I'm just like, nope, no, yeah. thank you. I like sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot watch this. So, like, Amanda Bynes... She was the one who, who called time on the Amanda show. Um, mm-hmm. And her and Dan Schneider wanted to create an idea for the WB or for, mm-hmm. for a network and, like that has an adult audience. And it was the WB that came along and said, we'll pick you up. But a, mm-hmm. lot, a lot of people... Like it gets lost in the, in all the, like, Michigas. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, Amanda Bynes, huge controversies around her. Yeah, it's with so her mental stability, which is unfortunate because I really do think that it has something to do with that Dan Schneider guy. Oh, hundo percent. And I also <laughs> think that she, her issues started around early twenties, which is when. You know, there's a lot of mental illnesses that come up at that time, and I think she was triggered by something, and, you know, people blame drugs, but I think she was probably trying to use drugs to silence some issues there. Oh, yeah. Um, One thing that is never discussed is the fact that Dan Schneider pushed hard for Amanda Bynes to be emancipated. Mm -hmm. Because when it came to What I Like About You... Um, she always had to have a grandma on set up until she was 18. Um, so he wanted her to get emancipated, and it very nearly happened, but, like, she eventually, like, said no. And mm-hmm. after the first season of What I Like About You, Dan Schneider was, like, completely removed from the role, and um, it fell more into the hands of, Karen Lucas Mm -hmm. and that's for me when the show like got really good was season two and three well it wasn't obsessed with feet or young girls being (laughs) sexualized so yeah that's great like the whole Dan Schneider thing if you look it up online guys it is the most fucked up like most protective like worse than Weinstein because he was preying on young children and it's interesting because when Amanda had her breakdown we're on a first name basis me and Mandy (laughs) um when Amanda had her breakdown she started lashing out and saying her parents had abused her her father had abused her but then she rephrased it and said like you let things happen to me which I think is very interesting because I do think they probably had some idea about what this guy was doing because a lot of people did. Yeah. And I think about even like I worked at Nick at Night um, and TV Land and I think about those like award shows and how people would always kind of make, you know, hush comments about certain things. And I was just looking back at it now. I never thought about it then, but now I'm like, oh shit, there were some fucked up people that everybody knew about. Yeah. I mean, that's another part of, the Halloween franchise is the most recent four films um, were under the Weinstein Company banner. Um, so it's it's always interesting to go back and watch scenes now, knowing what we know. Yeah. Especially with the Rob Zombie Halloweens, which are so um, en- ingrained with sex. Se- female sexual violence and it's well i mean i feel like so much programming is but yeah i'm sure it was like harvey at wine seems probably like this is great (laughs) but back to the positives yes um i mean (laughs) i don't necessarily see or necessarily want a future 
for Amanda Bynes on TV, I feel like mm-hmm. that yes, it, I just it's too much of a, a magnifying glass now. Anything, yeah, it would be really difficult for her to come back. Uh, it it would be, be mm-hmm. like you know when Britney Spears was on How I Met Your Mother. Yes, that was just so weird. It's very awkward, and they um at the Freaks and Geeks in Tri- Tribeca made international news. I don't know if you saw it or not, but um they had. A, a, approached Paul Feig and Judd Apatow and asked them if Britney Spears could guest star, if they could write her in to Freaks and Geeks. And they were like, no, what don't you get about this show? It's not about beautiful people. (laughs) That would be so weird if all of a sudden, like, the most beautiful woman walked in. Like, I mean, I think Britney's now doing great. I think the Vegas residency was the best thing for her. I feel like she's healthy. It's great. But... And I hope the best for Amanda. I think Amanda Bynes wants to be in fashion, and I hope that she gets whatever she wants in that, because I think she's had a tough life. Yeah. But she was really talented, and it's sad that she's not an actress anymore. It, it is, and it took... There was a, a, a long period where I couldn't go back and watch anything that she was in. Um, mm-hmm. And it's only just recently I can go back up and, and watch what I like about you. And it's that to me, it's not, I don't necessarily like it because it's good. Um, mm-hmm. It's just, it's again, it's comfort food, it's familiarity. It, it reminds me of sort of what I feel was like the pinnacle of my life, too. <laughs> Like, Mm -hmm. I I had this huge website, and that was, like, my entire universe. I would wake up. And this, you have to think, this was back, we didn't have Twitter. We didn't have social media. Everything that I had to report on, like, took a lot of research. Yeah. Um. God bless Google Alerts. I signed up for a Google Alert on Amanda Bynes in 2004. Um, Mm -hmm. So I've been getting daily emails (laughs) since then. Do you still update the site at all? No. um, It was through my free web space as part of my internet package. Oh, okay. And they decided, who uses web space anymore? Mm-hmm. So they um, deleted it. <sighs> Boo, <laughs> all that great traffic, gone. But um, for one brief moment, it was the biggest site on Amanda Bynes yeah, ever. Yeah, it was 2002 to 2007. So it was pretty, it had a good run. Um, and it coincidentally, like, 2007 was the tail end, like, What I Like About You had finished, um, Hairspray had come out, and so the last film after that was Sydney White, um, which, do you, uh, do you even know Sydney White? <laughs> I've never heard of that. I remember her in Hairspray, she was adorable. Yeah, that was, I thought things were going to take off. She's one of the few people who's acted opposite John Travolta and Kelly Preston. Because Kelly Preston played her mum in What a Girl Wants. Mm-hmm. And John Travolta plays Edna Turnblad in Hairspray. But hmm. again, in Hairspray, like Nikki Blonsky, that didn't take off for her. She had like a role in Ugly Betty and that was it. Yeah, I mean... I think she was actually in our celebrity Big Brother. <laughs> no, that was that was Marissa. Uh, oh, you're right. Winifred. You're right. I was thinking of the wrong person. <laughs> See, I'm not great with names. But you were worried no, about it because like, I know no one. <laughs> Marissa was um, in the hairspray that was on stage. That's right. That's right. So same same character, different actress. Yes. So, what do you think is next for Amanda Bynes? Um, Well, I agree with you. She 
released a fashion line in 2007, but the clothing store went bankrupt, so that didn't last. Um, you know, that's what why she studies. That's I feel like. You know, she could be in that part of the universe um, in in a way that, like, the Olsen twins, they don't necessarily act anymore, but they're yeah. very of the fashion world. Mm-hmm. Um, but what's unfortunate is that her, she's always going to have that attached to her, and it's not necessarily anything any avenue that she tries to go down it's the press are going to be like former actress yeah former troubled times and you know it's it's um i don't see it going the way of like when when on a rider or drew barrymore and like having a resurgence in her adult years Mm mm-hmm um, you never know. I mean, America loves a comeback, and I feel like there's probably room for her. I just wonder if she wants it. Yeah. It's like she gave that interview, and that came out of nowhere. And obviously it's gone back into nowhere. Nothing has, has come of it as, yeah. as yet. And it just felt to me like she didn't believe what she was saying. She was just kind of... She wanted to give reassurance in, in in a way of she knew she knows she has fans from tv and film and she didn't want mm-hmm. to like ruin them and say no this is it for me yeah well i think you have an amazing top five very diverse ran the gambit from old to young I am so grateful that we finally figured out how to work the audio. It might not be the best sounding, but I think we had a lot of fun. And I appreciate you, you know, making time. It's very late over there. So it's very kind of you to stay up and do this. So um, is there anything that you want people to know or follow you or? Um, I guess just keep an eye out. Um, Subscribe to the Pretty Little Pod feed. You can listen to old episodes of Pretty Little Podcasters. I guest star on, I think it's 603. Mm-hmm. Uh, not necessarily a standout episode. I think it was the, <laughs> I think it was the first one with Sarah Harvey. Uh, oh, wow. That's a good one. <laughs> well, go back and listen to that and get ready for Pretty Little Myers, everybody. Um, Tom, thank you so much for joining us. Thank and you. Everybody, if you're listening, please subscribe and tell some friends. And uh, I'll see you next week. Bye. All right. That was awesome.